This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. I think there's a myth that needs to be busted about your favorite photographers. Many of us romantically assume that the photographers we look up to walk around the corner, they see a scene, lift up the camera, hit the shutter, and they walk away, and it's a great image every time. That every time they hit that shutter button, it's a banger. But the reality is most of us have to take a lot of shots to get to those good ones. I mean, I said in a recent video that if I go shoot on the street, I might be out for two hours, I could take 50 to 100 images, and of that pool, I've only got one or two keepers, and that's a good day for me. Part of that is experimenting, part of it might be finding a scene and taking a number of shots in the same location, part of it is visually scrapbooking ideas that I wanna come back to later, but the point is, I take way more images than you'll ever see, and that's that's the process that I have to engage in to get to the good shots that I'm willing to post. And that's true of all photographers. In fact, I picked up a book a little while ago called the Magnum Contact Sheet book. And I, I can't recommend this book highly enough. I found it fascinating and interesting to see the process of some of the world's most famous photographers. Because what the book does is it shows you their contact sheets. And in those contact sheets, you'll see the image that they're famous for, but you'll also see around that image the other shots they took to get there and what their process was to arrive at that final image. I mean, this is a famous shot from Cartier-Bresson in Seville, and I know this shot, I know how interesting it is compositionally, but when I take a look on this side and see the different shots he took to get there, some of them are definitely better than others, but he stopped here and he worked the scene to take a look through to see which shots were working, who was arranged where, and he waited for the subjects in that space to move around and get into the right position. And I just think it's fascinating seeing how his mind worked. And not every shot had to be great. He was working towards something. And then this is one of my favorite photographers, Steve McCurry. He took the shot in 1983 in Rajasthan. It's a famous shot of uh, seven women sort of huddled. And I've seen people analyze this and sort of say seven women and there's seven trees in the background. But you can see this wasn't him just lifting the camera and taking the shot, that if you look at his, his slides, you can see that he worked towards this. There were lots of shots taken, lots of ideas he was exploring. He was off to the side shooting something totally different for a while. But when he found this group of women, this cluster of women, he just started to hone in and work out how to position himself, position those, those pots and to get to the shot that he really wanted at the end of the day. Another favorite for me is Trent Park, who does beautiful, crunchy black and white photography and really plays with light. Uh, this shot was taken in Australia, in Sydney in 1998. But you could see when you look at his contact sheet that this wasn't just snapped and he had a brilliant shot straight away. He was walking around on that day. He was trying different things. He had some uh, frames which definitely didn't work. He was, he was looking at reflections on the floor a little bit. There were very average shots in there, but then he found this scene and what the light was doing, and he honed in for a little while, and he, he, he got that shot that he wanted with the composition he wanted, but it wasn't the first time he clicked the shutter. He had to work towards it, and then he worked away from it towards something else, but each shot is moving him potentially towards a final image. And he doesn't have the pressure on himself to have every shot be something fantastic. So I thought in this video, it might be a nice idea to walk you through one of my contact sheets. I'll show you every shot I took on an afternoon walking around in sequence so you can see my thought process, including the bad images and how I arrive at the final images that I end up posting. Okay, so let's jump in. I'm gonna show you a contact sheet of a recent walk I was doing around London. Um, I started out on a nice sunny day at South Bank, headed over the river into the city and wound up sort of near St. Paul's Museum of London kind of area, if any of you care about that sort of thing. Um, you're gonna see on the contact sheet that the numbers are sequential. I haven't skipped any out, just so that you know that I haven't taken any images out. You're gonna see every image I took that day. I'm not cheating. So you can actually see the process of what I'm thinking, good shots and bad shots as I go around. Um, for those of you who want to know and care, I was shooting on my Sony a7 III with my Zeiss 55mm uh, 1.8. So that's the gear that I was using. And you're going to see right off the bat, like not every shot I take is meant to be a final image. Shots like these first ones up here. I make sure that when I'm going around and shooting that if I just see interesting light, I shoot it. 
because I want to remember something about it. It might not be a final shot. I might actually end up posting it just because I like what it looks like, but, but I'm often just capturing interesting ideas that I might be able to use for other things later. I like the cool wall here and the pop of yellow. South Bank's great for this sort of thing. Something about this was cool. It's definitely not a final image. That's not why I'm taking the shot. And this stairway is really cool. I, I often visit this particular stairway and the ones around here but something about what the light was doing there and thinking about people coming around that corner was quite cool. I take these sort of shots just to remember that when I come back there might be something good there to see. So these are just ideas I'm collecting, almost like visual notes or visual, visually scrapbooking as I go around. This was probably the first shot that I thought, okay, there might be something in this one. Um, nice slice of light here with this stairway. And this was a reaction shot. I came around the corner and just saw this guy moving up, put the camera up and, and took the shot. And I thought this has a lot of potential and I liked it straight out the bat. I then took another visual note, just to remember that stairway, cutting off that little top here, just to see what it looked like on its own, sort of more minimal. And then I waited for a few more people. Honestly, only one person came up and I waited for about two minutes. And as you're gonna see through this process that I don't really have a lot of patience. Um, so I end up kind of moving on fairly quickly if not much is happening and for some reason I took another shot just to remind myself of what was going on, maybe just slightly tighter stepping in closer. I then went over to a set of stairs which I often visit. These are a very famous set of stairs, nice graphical lines and a beautiful sort of background. Um, I often shoot this stairway. I don't post a lot of the shots but it's interesting to see sort of as people are moving up the stairway. So what might be possible, you might catch something interesting. I like what the light was doing at this time of day as well. But there was no image there I thought was really great. I wasn't going to end up using any of these as final images, but I took them anyway. I just took a spread and probably stood here for about two minutes and just fired off. Um, this, I saw some potential with sort of the lines here in this box here, but this isn't a final shot. Again, it's just a note to myself that maybe when this area is more busy or full at different times of the day when the light's a bit better, there might be something here. And then here, this sort of siding, which is sort of near South Bank with these lines on the wall, this sort of stripe. And the light here, it's not in the right place, but I took the shot because I want to come back here and see what else the light does with this siding because there might be a cool shot to be had here. So take the shot. And then I started walking down South Bank. Um, and these two shots are really nothing. I just picked up the camera. I just, I love these pillars and I just tried something. They're definitely not final images but I thought I'd take the shot anyway, just to see what I'm gonna get. So in this set here, on this, on this first sort of page, this first 20, uh, this is sort of a visual note. This is a visual note to myself. There's nothing in this, nothing in this, nothing in this. This is probably the only shot on the page that has the potential to be a final shot. So this is the one I wanna remember. Uh, this is just a visual note of what those stairs are doing. I kind of like this one, but honestly, this is stronger, so I'm going to let this one go. It's the same visual note as this. There's nothing in these stairs on this day, really, so just ignore. I ignore all these stair shots. There's nothing there. I took them because I wanted to see what the light was doing, and, and maybe someone interesting came past, but no one really did. Nothing in this, maybe for a future day. This has some potential. It's just sort of a visual note for future. What's this going to do in the future? How's the shadows going to line up with things in the background? Does this have potential for something else? And these two shots are nothing. So on that first page, you can see there's only one shot that even has the potential to be something final. And there's a few visual notes and everything else is just junk and just shooting and experimenting. On the next page, you can see I'm still walking along South Bank and there's, you know, the normal scenes you see along South Bank. So I took the shot. I'm not ever going to use this. It's a bit of a touristy shot, but I took it anyway. Um, sometimes it's just fun to take a shot. And uh, there was something about this sort of orange with this construction going on in the orange of the guy's um, high-vis jackets. But again, it's not a good shot. It's just I thought I'd take it because there's something colorful and interesting about it. And maybe it will give me an idea for something in the future. I couldn't get in the right position to really compose anything useful. And then I started walking into the city and I came across this uh, siding here. It's the side of a church with this lovely old wooden sign and a bench. And the first shot I hit, you know, a cab drove in front of me as I was standing across the road. There was some beautiful light here. So I just sort of hung out here and you can see for a while I was shooting in portrait and I was just waiting for people to walk in front. I had the shot composed and then I was waiting to see who'd walk through that scene and to see what happened. And this might be a good time to 
talk about the different sorts of street photographers. It's it's not my idea. I've, I've heard it so spoken about by other photographers. You get two different sorts of street photographers. You get hunters and you get fishermen. And hunters will walk around and seek subjects out and they'll follow people or they'll they'll try and walk quickly to see as many different sorts of people as possible and they're shooting people people the whole time and they're always on the move whereas fishermen will find a good space with interesting light or an interesting composition and they'll wait to see who moves through that space so you you camp an area it's like finding a good spot for fishing and casting your line in one spot over and over again and i suppose as a street photographer i would fall more into the category of a fisherman. I will walk around and, and sort of just snap off shots but when I find something that's an interesting background with interesting light then I'll stop and I'll wait to see what happens in that space which is why I sort of fall into that category. And you can see I shot um, portrait for a while orientation and something just didn't really feel right about that. I, I liked it but it felt like there could be more somehow. These being so close to the edge wasn't really working for me. I wanted more shadow in it. Um, so I decided to switch to landscape and see what happens and that's when it starts to unlock a little bit for me and the first guy who walked through on this landscape orientation I really liked so this shiny um, gray suit and the headphones and, and his gait was perfect it just caught at the right moment the signs behind him so something about that was great this sort of clicked for me I hung around to see if I could get a few more sort of trying sort of shadow and then maybe just a highlight of somebody coming through and then two people in the middle it was just too cluttered this guy was all right didn't like the gate as much uh, this guy was okay I preferred the other one so you can sort of see by this point I lost patience again so I'm I'm fishing in this spot but I probably what took 18 17 18 shots in that spot and that took me maybe two minutes I don't have a lot of patience so I don't hang around too often I shoot see what I can get in that space in a short period of time and move on because I want to see other things and then I found a little corner here which had some sort of interesting shadow lines shapes and these bollards and wait for people to walk around and started shooting on that corner so on this uh, selection of 20 there's really nothing I mean these two uh, not interested in at all. I found a good space which I thought was interesting uh, and I, I camped it for a little bit. I found the orientation and really this one, this one here is the only one that's really interesting me uh, that's maybe got some potential to be something. So that's really the only potential final of this set and then I've already moved on to the next thing. So here's the third batch you can see uh, from the last page I'm still at this corner. Nothing's really happened. No one's really walked around, but I do like something about it. So again, I've snapped it as a visual note. Uh, I saw some interesting light at the end of an alleyway. thought maybe I could use that and silhouette people walking past, but I took one shot and realized there's not really much in it. There was some really cool bounce light in this intersection. I took the shot again. It's not a final shot. I just liked how these shadows were being filled in by bounce off an opposite building. There's hard sunlight here and there's deep shadow here. I couldn't find a composition, couldn't find anything to work, so I just kind of left it. And then I found like a really interesting strip of light. Sunlight was bouncing into this shadowed space directly off some mirrored um, glass opposite creating some really nice shadows on the pavement. So I thought here, I'm back in fishing mode. I found an interesting space uh, and I wanna just stay here and see what happens. Honestly, these highlights here were bugging me because it draws attention. If this was a dark area, this would be a much stronger way to compose. I snap this as a visual reference right off the bat. I usually snap a plate like this with no one in the shot just to remember what drew me to the light and then I start waiting for subjects to move through. This guy was all right. Um, Someone sort of came running through, I thought it was interesting. A guy is stepping into the road here. I like this juxtaposition with these two. And I sort of grabbed another shot as they walked past each other. And then, yeah, this lady walking past. This is by the Lloyds building in London, if anyone cares. But none of them really hit me. I, I had them in the bag, but something about this just wasn't clicking. So I kind of got a few and moved on. And then I turned around behind me and notice that an escalator coming down out of the building opposite had this beam of light hitting right in the middle of the escalator and people were coming up and down for lunch. So I stood opposite and I started to shoot people coming down the escalator opposite. Just seeing, because I mean, I can't control this too much. I've just got this highlight, which I'm exposing for. You can watch my manual video, uh, manual mode video if you're interested to see so how I expose for this sort of thing. And I'm just getting people as they come down the stairs, looking for interesting faces uh, in that light and it looks like 
Um, yeah, just catching faces. That's all I'm looking for. And I'm looking for sort of interesting characters in that pool of light there. So I've got a few of those. And I know I'm probably going to give this a, a cheeky little crop at some stage because it's, it's you know, some of this is a bit distracting. And I, I, I like, I'll probably pull down the shadows and Lightroom just to make it a bit more negative space. And then just because I'm in this area and I love the architecture and the light was doing cool stuff, I turned around as well and sort of snapped some architectural shots of the building opposite. So looking at this again, like this is a little visual note, nothing here, nothing here. Nothing really clicked with this. Again, like a little visual note to remind me of sort of what happens in this area with this reflecting light. And none of these really sang or stuck out to me. And then I think it was this one here that kind of stood out as a potential with an interesting face in that light. So there's really only one potential final on this page. And, you know, just because I like them, I, I might end up using one of these architectural shots as well. But, you know, it's not really an exciting shot for me. It's just something that's nice and graphical and strong, which I know as well will work very well in black and white. So I might use it. Moving on to the next page again, uh, you know, we're starting out as uh, another shot. I sort of took three in a row. There was actually planes coming past behind the buildings, I remember. And I was wondering if I could wait long enough to see one come through. But I waited two or three minutes, five minutes even, which is a long time for me. And nothing came through. So I, I sort of moved on at that point. This, I have no idea what I was doing. I think I just liked the pipes on the side of the building. I wanted to see if I could overlay some interesting shapes in front. But it really didn't work. And I knew it straight away. And then this was an interesting scene, like, you know, this is, these are all unedited shots. I haven't done anything to them, but you can see there was this strange crisscross of light that almost looks like I was splitting the frame uh, with this shadow that was falling past. There was some crazy bounce light over here, another shadow. So I just, I wasn't sure how to compose this, but it was so interesting. It almost looks like, you know, you've got a filter half over your lens or something odd going on, but this is just the shadow that was in that space at the time. So I decided just to hang out and see what I could do with it, see who was moving through it again. So I found a spot and I'm just seeing who moves through that space and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of fishing again. So these businessmen who are hanging out there, again, you can see there's some potential for sh weird shadows coming from odd angles, but the light's coming from different directions. I couldn't really make anything work though. Um, I sort of like this with sort of two and two and the guys in the dark and the light, but they were just off. I prefer if they were sort of over here, this guy in high vis was ruining it. This bit of a dump truck or a cement truck in the background was kind of ruining it. I didn't like the tape across it. There were lots of things kind of wrong with it that sort of ruined it a little bit for me. This guy walking right down the line, I thought might work, but didn't really. Guy sort of running through another guy. So this was frustrating because there was potential. I just couldn't work it out. There was lots of distraction and there wasn't really the right subject there. But again, it's something I, I definitely want to revisit. And then again, some, some little visual notes. I just liked how these railings were sort of vertical. We got the vertical lights and then these sort of hanging um, height markers for trucks going into this car park. I just thought those vertical lines were interesting. It's not a shot. It's nothing I'd show, but again, just something I want to remember as a visual note. And then I went past the Gherkin, which is a famous building in London, just in the same sort of area. And at particular times in the day, you get these really cool rectangles, which are being um, cast off the building. These sort of rectangles of light onto the pavement, which are, which are quite beautiful. I thought this has the potential. So now I'm going to stop. I'm, I'm fishing again. I found an interesting scene. I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to work the scene. This is what you call working the scene. I want to see who moves through what light does to subjects as they move through, how I could compose them well. But you can see I've already found my subject with this V at the top and then these leading lines of these uh, rectangles coming down. So one person, two people, three people, and four. Again, you could tell it was lunchtime because everyone's walking around with their prep bags and sandwiches coming back from lunch. And from this set, again, so I'm, I'm not going to worry about this. This is the same as the previous one. This is nothing. It really didn't work out. None of these really worked the way I wanted them to, so I just kind of moved on from these. These aren't shots I'd ever use. There's a little visual note in this. Nothing I'd actually use, but maybe to come back and see what else I could do. The light spilling over and all these vertical lines could do something interesting, I'm not sure. And then these are working, and I don't like the bags in these two. They distract, but I think this guy's gait uh, in, in this shot is, is the one that has a potential final. It needs to be brightened up a bit in Lightroom, need to pull the exposure a bit and bring back a few of the shadows. Might make a nice black and white edit, but this is a final has potential.
And then the next set of 20, uh, you can see again, there was some very interesting light bouncing through this tree here. So it was creating these really cool shadows. And I wondered if there was something in this, and I kind of like this sort of um, circle, half circle here at the bottom, people moving through these lines, bit of bark in it. So a bit of organic with the sort of shape of the tree and the branches, but also something very industrial and straight line. That kind of interplay was quite interesting to me and what the light was doing. Uh, again, I couldn't, I, I camped that area a little bit. Again, just two or three minutes, saw who walked through and something was wrong about it. Something just wasn't really clicking. I think it was just the heads were always in shadow. Uh, and I didn't really want that. I, I couldn't balance the light and the shadows, the suits in the way that I wanted. Um, so it wasn't totally working for me, so I moved on. Then I just decided to do something very simple, very, very graphical. I like this V, so I sort of stepped down off this sort of siding I was uh, on up above here and just stood in front of this V. I love these hard shadows and lines and shapes and I decide to see who moves in front. This is a visual note. I want to remember this without anyone in it because it's got some graphical potential. And then I just started to see. And this guy kind of walked in front, didn't like anything in front, but then someone walked behind. I saw him coming from down the corridor and waited till he was right in that gap because I could see there was light hitting from behind as well. And bang, that for me works. I'm done. I didn't need to do anything else now because I knew this was the sort of image I wanted. I could have waited a while longer to see what else I could have got, but honestly, I was kind of happy with this and I was done fishing in that spot, so I moved on. This is just something very abstract. I like the pipes, and again, this tree in front and some of the lights. It's not a shot, I just took it as a visual note to remember and moved on. And then I was walking down these sidings. This is just sort of uh, temporary siding while they're doing um, some uh, renovations on a building and they've stuck up this orange um, barrier so people can't get through there and seeing people come around the corner in this light, I thought there might be something there. I stood here just for a couple of minutes and not even, probably 30 seconds and had three people walk through and straight away realized it's too dark versus the light and doesn't really work as a composition. So I moved on. I came across this cool sort of mirrored pillar and wondered if I could get some interesting reflections here. Again, something wasn't working so I moved on. I liked the guy sitting on the bench and wondered if there was some interesting composition with the straight lines and this guy sitting here, but again, I, after the first shot, I knew it didn't really work. This is a cool spot near um, Barbican with these great sort of wavy overhead lines and you've got the straight lines, the building, and then the old London walls. But again, I just took a snapshot, realized straight away it wasn't working. And then I was through to sort of Barbican area. Again, just took a shot. I just like this area, wanted to remember it. There's nothing in the shot that's interesting. I saw an interesting bit of light. I like the kind of blue and then the brown of the bricks. But um, again, it's not a shot, it's just a note. And then right by the Museum of London, these cool like striations from the light falling through the beams from above and then on the floor, something interesting there as a visual note, which I took as well. And then from above, with the sort of curved brick of the wall and some of these shadows, I thought there were some interesting things going on. So yeah, some visual notes. So there's nothing really here on this page, nothing at the top. This, as I said, had potential for me as a final. That was going to be interesting to look at later. Nothing here, just a little visual note, maybe. Uh, nothing here really was working, not really here. And then no, 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 maybe a visual note at best on these two, but nothing I'd ever use. It's just, I don't know, something graphical I liked about it that I want to keep looking at and, and, and working out what drew me to this. And that's why I take these visual notes. So I can look afterwards and work out what drew me to this in the first place and how can I develop things like that? How can I get subjects in these or, or even just shoot them as something that's more abstract. There's nothing wrong with doing that either, but doing it in a more refined way, something that's, that's a bit more polished. And then these last few images just show you sometimes something magic just happens that you can't control. I'd actually given up shooting at this point and gone across the museum uh, over the road. There's a pret on the corner and I grabbed a salad and was having a bit of lunch. And then these guys came in and started uh, ramping up the wall opposite on their scooters. And so I scoffed down the rest of my salad and ran outside and started taking photographs as they were ramping up the side of this wall and using some of these lines and shadows and trying to catch them at particular moments. And I only had about five minutes to do this because they were using the whole road to get enough of a run up to get up the wall. There was sort of a, a dip here where they could come up the pavement, up the wall and get enough speed, but a truck parked right in their path and they gave up after about five minutes and moved on. And you can see, I'm just trying to catch them in interesting spots 
um, places where light and shadow is doing something interesting using a very graphic background and them in particular spots. The silhouette wasn't really working for me. This was working quite well, I, sort of catching him in some of this shadow, this negative space. I knew, I mean, I only usually edit these images on Lightroom Mobile on my phone, and I know just grabbing that shadow slider and pulling it down, he's gonna be in some nice negative space there. And then even after they moved on, I still, again, grabbed a couple of shots just of these interesting shapes and shadows as a visual note because of what drew me there in the first place. So with these last ones, I mean, the potential finals were really this one here in terms of placement of the subject and probably this one here because of the negative space. And this is just sort of a, a visual note. So I hope this gives you some idea of my process. I suppose in my case, I go out and I hunt for interesting light and shadow. Then I'll camp that spot and start fishing and wait for people to move through and see what happens in that space. I have a lot of street photographers criticizing me saying that what I do is not really street photography, that the subjects in my frame are anonymous or boring and I don't necessarily even disagree with them and I really don't mind what label you put on what I do. I'm unashamedly more interested in really fascinating light and shadow than I am in the subject who happens to be moving through the frame. Photographers like Vivian Mayer or Gary Winogrand who you heard about in the recent video with Mavis they were hunters. They wanted to go out and find interesting subjects, and that might be you. You might be somebody who's fascinated with people and actions on the street and what they're doing, and that's your vein and that's your process. Personally, I resonate more with photographers like Trent Park and Cartier Bresson, who I think were more interested in good compositional, interesting light and shadows than they were in the specific subjects in the frame. And I think that just goes to prove that for as many photographers as there are, that's how many different opinions there are about what good photography is and what your process should be to get there. And it leaves you wide open to choose for yourself. At the very least, no matter what your approach, I hope this has shown you that you don't need to feel bad if you come back from the end of a day shooting with nothing to show from it. I often come back with no good images. Sometimes I come back with one or two. On a great day, I might come back with five or six. But even when I come back with nothing, that time spent walking around and looking and taking those little visual notes and logging things away means I improve my chances of getting great shots the next time I go out. So don't obsess about getting a great shot every time you click the shutter. Engage in the process. I mean, if I set myself the goal, and I do, of posting one image every single day, and say I take 40 to 50 shots to get to that one image every time, that means I take around 18,000 shots a year to show you 365, but I know that's what it takes to get to those good images, and I don't feel ashamed about that at all. So play the long game, shoot a lot, don't worry about your hit rate, find your process, the one which helps you to get to the good images. Because to be very honest, we couldn't care how you get there, we just want to see good work from you. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. If you need a new website or a domain, they're a fantastic option. I've used them myself for eight or nine years for all my professional work. One of the great things about Squarespace is the analytics they provide in the back end. It really helps me to see where people are spending time on the site and construct it in such a way that people want to stay and hang out there and take a look around. And especially if you're doing e-commerce, I mean, I have my store where I sell prints and books every year and it helps me to see which products people are looking at, which they add to their cart and abandon, which they actually go through and purchase. And all that helps me strategize about how I'm going to run my store and sell those products into the future. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.